it's one of the most uh, difficult disciplines we have uh, in life as human beings when it is about to achieve goals in society. Yes? Let us know when you are finished so we will put the animation on, okay? Thank you. Uh, my name is Juan Zabaleta and I am an artist from uh, Mexico and Canada. I've been living in Canada for 10 years now. And I'm going to talk uh, very little about my background. So you will understand more or less why I made the installation I made here today. 20 years ago, we started working as a collective in Mexico City. Working uh, in performance and installation as well. Our first goal, it was at the beginning to shock people with very violent performances using as a background death metal music. Uh, sorry, Roman, uh, you're going to block the other camera. Um, because we were from Mexico City, we thought we needed to say something regarding the violence we were living there. But the performances were not enough. And because our performances were very theatrical, and we loved to build very big scenarios for them. We decided to transform our performances into installation. And at that time, one of our members, Teresa Margolles, had full access thanks to her studies in forensic medicine uh, to the morgue in Mexico City and the morgue of the National Mexican University in Mexico City as well. And we thought it was an excellent opportunity to show to the world, to show to the audience how important it was for us to demonstrate that we could use the human carcass as prime material to produce art, to produce a work of art, but not just like that, but to use it with a purpose. So we started doing installations with human remains. And we made uh, about seven installations, uh, very well known in Mexico and in some other parts of the world, like Spain, and France, and so on. And our first ins installation we made, we intended to do it not with human carcasses, but with horses. And uh, it was, the installation was enormous, uh, twice the size of this gallery probably, with uh, adult horses and so on. And the exhibition was so successful and so shocking at the same time that one thing I remember of it, is that uh, a super conservative animal protection society in Mexico threatened us to death. Because uh, it was 1994 and they didn't understand what was going on. Uh, after those years, we did achieve very good success with our works regarding death, violence and sexuality with these installations with human remains. Um, in the year 2000, the collective, which by the way, it was called SEMEFO, which means in Spanish, it's an acronym, which means uh, Forensic Medical Services. That was the name of our collective. And so after the year 2000, I decided to keep going with the, my individual career. And I started a drawing with charcoal, uh, as I did with this installation. And I was profoundly shocked 
and fascinated with human sexuality and eroticism. And uh, what I'm going to say here regarding my installation and the purposes of my work is very profound and it has so many things to do with uh, real life right now that uh, as a conceptual artist I have to separate myself I have to separate my opinions from the opinions of Abnormals Gallery in order to respect the gallery the members of abnormals.org and to respect myself these are my personal ideas only um, I strongly believe that sexuality has been turned against us in a systematically perfect way and uh, sexuality has turned into an obsession into an addiction for us even though we don't know it and the way they are handling this and I mean they I'm talking about the new world order which is a very powerful elite in the world controlling everything believe it or not this addiction is based the tip of this addiction the tip of the pyramid of is pornography and pornography is being used in the most clever way through the internet hundreds of millions of people mainly men are addicted to pornography in the internet it's so powerful that people around the world spend hundreds of millions of dollars every 24 hours paying with their credit cards to pornographic websites now the owners of these websites they don't even know what they are doing they don't know they are puppets of the new world order but this addiction is so deeply controlled that is connected also with alcohol with drugs, with gambling, with um, all kind of other addictions you can think about. You name it, it's just the same. It's a big tree with several hundreds of branches. They are everywhere. And in my case, I wanted to make a statement, very powerful, using my passion my own passion which is drawing I am a conceptual artist but my passion is drawing so I, I thought what could I do in order to mix installations with my drawings and I thought it was a good idea to use this investigation of what I was doing uh, about pornography in the internet and so Basically, I put myself in a very dangerous situation because I started drawing close-up pictures of genitalia in an obsessive way. I decided to spend one year drawing every day, eight hours a day in my studio, taking pictures from the internet what website it was that doesn't matter there are tens of thousands of pornographic websites in the internet so every day I was going to the internet choosing randomly take pictures of close-ups of masturbation or intercourse or penises or vaginas that doesn't matter and then took them to my studio and draw them obsessively one behind the other one behind the other to the point that after just a few months I was not enjoying it at all I was giving myself a, a torture it was tiresome it was obsessive it was uh, painful 